In this video, I'm going to give you the 14 facts you might have not known about Halo Infinite, things about how weapon racks actually work, the sprint speed within Halo Infinite, medals, MMR to being displayed, player movements, and can you grapple shot a chicken? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So yes, we've had blog updates, we've had a chance to play the flight, we had a flight stream from 343 detailing everything that's in this flight, but when you actually get a chance to play the game, some interesting things kind of pop up that we didn't really know existed before. So I combed the internet for interesting things that happened within this game. I found some unique aspects of the game, some interesting changes, and some advancements as well for Halo Infinite. So I wanted to put that all in one video for you guys because in the internet there's tons of just like little clips here and there like, oh, did you see this? Did you see that? This video is going to be a one-stop shop for all the awesome, interesting aspects of Halo Infinite that you might have seen around. And I credit each point in the description as well, so go check out these content creators and also just their posts as well to give them some likes if you enjoyed the clips. So if you like these informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out the channel. And we'll stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. Number one on our list is actually how weapon racks work within Halo Infinite. You might have seen a red weapon on the weapon rack when you're picking up weapons. That's because in Halo there's, there's primary power weapons like rocket launchers and things like that that just have these spawners that tell everyone when they're spawning up. Then you have secondary power weapons which are traditionally like shotguns, scatter shots, and things like that. This one's like a heat wave which looks to be a secondary power weapon. The respawn timer only starts when the weapon is inactive on the map. So when you come across a weapon where the weapon is indicated in red that means it's in use actually then when the spawn timing is activated you see a spawn bar right here once that bar fully fills up then the weapon is ready to spawn next is a great video showcasing the sprint speed within halo infinite now i've seen multiple people talk about the sprint speed i've seen as saying people saying as low as two percent i've seen people saying as high as ten percent when it comes to the sprint speed this video by nade god which if you guys aren't following him on twitch and youtube you definitely should does a really great job of analyzing the actual speed of Halo Infinite Sprint and how much of a speed boost percentage-wise you actually receive. All right, I did some calculations, did some recordings, took some time, uh, and I've come to the conclusion that Halo Infinite's max top sprint speed versus just walking is only 8.94% faster. So we can go ahead and just say it's only 9% faster. I recorded myself walking from the end of this wall all the way to the end of this pole. And then I did the same thing, but the next time I sprinted. And then instead of including the ramp up time for the sprint and the walking, I cut that out and I lined up the frames and the time of this shot right here as my starting point. So from this point in the map all the way to this structure, the Spartan took 4.7 seconds to walk there. And in terms of sprinting, it took him 4.28. And then you do the math and you come up with basically 9%. For number three on this list, we have brand new Killstreak medals as well. For a 25 Killstreak, you'll earn the medal Nightmare. Nightmare. A 30 streak will get you Boogeyman. Boogeyman. 35 will get you Grim Reaper. And 40 will earn you Demon. Demon. A lot of these sound effects were taken from Min Blitz's video, so big thanks to Min Blitz for posting that video. Go check him out, guys. Great video, great content. Number four is grenade hit markers. Now, I know a lot of people are happy about them. Some people are not happy about them. Me, I'm not a big fan of them. But an interesting compromise from Quinn Del Hoyo brings up what they're going to be doing about grenade hit markers within competitive Halo. Halo Pro Trippy mentioned about seeing grenade hit markers within the live stream and wasn't too happy about that. Quinn Del Hoyo, who is the lead of Sandbox team on Halo Infinite, says grenade hit markers will only be available in social slash unranked experiences for Halo Infinite. They will be turned off for competitive play settings. The next question I'm sure you all really want answered is, can you grapple shot a chicken? That poor, poor chicken, but yeah, you can. You can grapple shot chickens. This next bit of information helps you understand what kind of skill level you're playing at, as your matchmaking rank will be showcased within the game. Patman Gaming, who does YouTube as, and streams as well, guys, so please go check him out, tweeted this at me, showcasing that when you have a squad together, 
you can see your average team skill, which is MMR, your matchmaking rank. It showcases the number right there, which I think has been so helpful and actually might alleviate a lot of issues people were having with Halo 5. Because in Halo 5, there is MMR there as well, but it's much more fluctuated kind of number that kind of goes up and down. In your overall rank, which is like your platinum, silver, onyx, and stuff like that, those are kind of like your averaged out ranks between your MMR, which will drastically go up and down depending on how you play for that day. So it's great to see that most likely we will have some form of like an overall ranking system like we've had with every Halo ever, like a 1 through 50 or like the Halo 5 system, but also seeing your MMR skill ranking as well is good to know just kind of what kind of players you'll be matching against. Next, we have the return of thrust from Halo 4 and 5 in Halo Infinite. During the live stream from 343, you actually got a quick little moment of showcasing all the different keybinds and stuff like that. Well, one of the keybinds just shows Equip Thruster right here. And it's kind of interesting, we don't see the Repulsor in here. We see the Grapple Shot, Drop Wall, Threat Sensor, which we've all seen previously. We don't see the Repulsor, which we saw in the gameplay trailer, but you also see Thruster here. So, is it going to be like Halo 4's Thrust? Is it going to be like Halo 5's Thrust? Well, we won't know until we actually get a chance to play it. Number eight on this list is CE style spawning when it comes to power-ups within Halo Infinite. If you don't know what I mean by that, in Combat Evolved, all weapons and all power-ups were on a set timer. So every two minutes, that item would spawn back up. Then ever since then, it was more of a dynamic spawn when it came to power-ups. What I mean by dynamic means that whenever a player interacts with a power-up, that's when the timer actually starts. So it can muddy up the times a bit to not have it very consistent when these power-ups will be popping up. But from my experience, for one, now you get a call out when the power actives are gonna be coming onto the map. And also they're on a set timer. It seems like every two minutes they'll have a new power-up coming around. Number nine is that it looks like you can phase through teammates as in there is no player collision. A Reddit user posted up this clip just kind of pointing out exactly what I'm talking about. You can see how he kind of runs through this player, especially right here towards the end. He just kind of walks right through him and there is no player collision. Now this might be just a social setting only thing as previously throughout all Halo games that player collision was certainly a thing. I think this might be something that might be turned on during the competitive side of gaming when it comes to Halo Infinite, but for the social side of things, there is currently no player collision. I've heard people say this might be even be a bug. I think this is actually more of a feature and I think for social, I'm fine with that. Number 10 is that you cannot grenade jump anymore within Halo Infinite. YouTube user by the name Axios posted up this video just showcasing some myth busting within Halo Infinite. And you can see right here, he tried doing a little bit of a grenade jump, not exactly much happening there. There might be a little bit of a momentum boost when it comes to it, but with the frag grenade, nothing really happens. And you can definitely see that nothing happens with the plaza grenade as it seems like Grenade jumping is not really going to be a thing within Halo Infinite. Now, for me personally, I'm actually not too bent out of shape about this. I've always felt like grenade jumping within multiplayer was a little too detrimental to the gameplay of while you're playing in multiplayer. I never really utilized it so much. I think that's more just map design, making sure that you design your maps properly so then you don't have to like hurt yourself and damage yourself down to like one shot just to make a single jump. Number 11 on our list is the slide cancel ability. Halo Pro Snakebite made a little bit of a tutorial video to just kind of showcase exactly what he's talking about right here and it actually looks to be a very advantageous move this is something that actually was removed from competitive call of duty because it was so advantageous look at that right there he goes for the slide maneuver and he stops his slide momentum to kind of do like a little bit of a short slide or a slide cancel in a way so basically the way you do this is when you hit slide while you're sprinting you have to hold down on your left stick just to make sure that you don't continue forward so it cancels that momentum moving forward he showcases here on his controller and when you move it forward you would basically when you want to cancel your slide you just hold down on the left stick and it does it right there our next clip from snakebite showcases our number 12 list right here which would be the clamber peak ability which is very interesting basically you see right here this is from halo 5 where he's kind of looking over the ledge clambering up and then going back down basically the way you do this is as soon as you hit clamber you hold down on the left stick which will pull you back so you can instantly fall back from the ledge it's a great way to peak an edge so then you don't have to fully commit to a peak or also just kind of pop up put a little damage and pop away so it's a really great technique to utilize within this game a lot of halo 5 pros utilize this and i can see a lot of halo infinite pros utilizing it as well number 13 clipper is from the youtube creator shyway who shows a great way of how to use the geometry on the map to slide boost your way around 
Previously in Halo 5, you just do that yourself with like a boost slide jump kind of maneuver, but now you have to actually sprint, slide down a ramp, and then jump to kind of do that same kind of effect. But the way you do it is when you're sprinting, you jump, and while you're jumping, you're holding crouch, and then you're, while you're still holding crouch, you'll land on the downward ramp to launch you forward, and then you'll be able to get a nice little momentum boost right here. Shyway showcases that right here in this video. I apologize for the terrible quality. This is Twitter. This is what they do to us to make us cringe harder on the video quality. But you can see right here, he makes the jump, holds crouch, slides, and then he has a huge boost of movement right there. This is something that we actually saw back from Halo 3 days. And so it's just kind of been advanced to where you can actually utilize more geometry to do the same kind of techniques. That's why they showcase that clip right there. And it's going to be super advantageous for you to get to areas a lot faster. This which will be a huge skill gap for players to know the geometry of the map, understand the physics of the game as well. They have a huge advantage to, of movement within Halo Infinite. And last on our list, it showcases that you can actually launch your teammates with a skewer. Green Skull here showcases in this clip where if you line it up properly, your teammate will jump in the air, you shoot them with the skewer, it will actually launch them up which is actually kind of crazy to realize you can actually use some kind of momentum to actually pull that kind of maneuver up. That's really freaking awesome. I feel like just utilizing the sandbox in some unique ways like that is such a Halo thing. So those are the 14 facts you might have not known about Halo Infinite. If you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out the videos right here. I got a playlist that link all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.